Sadly, this figure could just be a fraction of the many victims of rape who are afraid to speak out because of fear, trauma, and shame. The Philippines never ran out of sensational rape cases in the past. The Mag Del Riva story, the Antonio Sanchez rape case, the Chong murders, and the Visconde massacre. And the reason why they are sensational? The victims were gang raped. But perhaps the most gruesome gang rape in Philippine history happened more than 75 years ago. The victims were not just one, not ten, not even a hundred, but more than 1,000 women were raped, tortured, and mutilated by an army of Japanese soldiers. So, who are they? They are the Filipino comfort women. They became the sex slaves of the Japanese Imperial Army during their occupation of the Philippines in the 1940s. What would it be like to be a Filipino comfort woman? How would you deal with being raped by more than 50 soldiers every day? And where are they now? This is Filipinos Ask What If? And here's what would happen if you were gang raped by the Japanese Imperial Army during the Second World War. The Japanese occupation of the Philippines occurred from 1942 to 1945 when Imperial Japan occupied the Philippines during World War II. Even though the Japanese period only lasted for three years, the misery suffered by the Filipinos was unfathomable. And how was life back then? Life then was at its most difficult because of widespread famine. Life was unbearable and they would often say that it's cheaper to buy a child than to buy a pig. military force was the most feared by many Filipinos. They specialized in interrogation and were known for their brutality. The chance of you surviving the torture is almost zero. You would be beaten heavily, drowned in water, burned alive, electrocuted, your limbs dislocated, and you would be forced to eat your own shit. And that's human cruelty at its finest. And perhaps the most sensational part of the Japanese occupation is the more than 1,000 Filipino women who were forced to sex slavery. They are called the comfort women, and if you were one, you would be forced to live in comfort station houses. No, you were not a prostitute. You would have been just a loving mother, a caring sister, and a sweet teenage child. The gang rape committed by the Japs to Filipinas did not happen by accident. It is but rather an organized and arranged sexual slavery system that is unique only to the Japanese Imperial Army. Mm, I'm intrigued. Tell me more. Any army around the world usually has brothels and prostitutes, but the Japanese has this enforced sexual slavery system. Oh, why do they need to have one? Comfort women stations had to be secured to prevent espionage and spread of venereal disease. If the soldiers would go to the brothels, there is always this danger that the prostitutes have a link to the guerrilla resistance movement, and comfort stations are more secured and watched over so the danger of the military information you leaking them out is very unlikely. The system was structured and routinized. Every month, a doctor would come around to check on you as a comfort woman to see if you are still good for the stations or not. Let's just say it's their quality assurance check, just checking if the victims are still fresh. The setup of the comfort women system followed a rigid algorithm, so methodical and systematized. Alright, in English please. Likened to a canteen, the hours of operation are strictly regulated. In the morning, the soldiers and privates would take turns in raping the women. In the afternoon, the corporals and the sergeants, and in the evening, it's the officers. This is how regulated and systematic the raping system was. 
In fact, in other comfort stations, the Japs would be issued ticket stubs that without them, they wouldn't be able to enter the comfort stations. Huh, I get it. So it's like a food stop, right? Yep. But instead of food, human life fresh is being served. Okay, continue. I'm listening. Each soldier is given only 5 minutes to spend inside the room because others are just outside the room waiting for their turns. Hmm. Suddenly, I'm hearing somebody saying, Hey, aren't you finished yet? And imagine the difficulty if you were a comfort woman because every 5 minutes, another soldier would rape you. And usually, your day ends with being raped by up to 50 soldiers. Yeah, freaking 50. And sometimes even more. Ooh, I think I'm gonna puke. That's just simply a horror movie at its finest. So, why they didn't fight? So you think they didn't? Well, imagine getting raped every day by 50 Japs. Do you think you could still have the energy to fight back? Actually, a comfort woman couldn't say no or else she would be killed. Most of the time, they mostly would be beaten up whenever the soldier didn't get satisfied. They were forced to do shrewd acts that are mostly just can be seen in porn movies. And most of them are sadists too. The torture being done to you is also insane. Name all the blunt objects that you could think of and they are inserted into your genital. Being burned with cigarette butts was also very common. And the most horrible part is when they don't get satisfied and they would cut off your breast while their comrades are laughing their arse off. Ah, uh, calling Mr. Gray, the chops just made you look like less 50 shades of an amateur. <laughs> experience if you were a comfort woman. Many didn't survive and died. It is estimated that 70% of the comfort women died because of being killed, died of sickness and injury, and some just chose to commit suicide. But unlike the physical trauma that these comfort women suffered which at least could be washed away with soap and water, the psychological scar these women had to endure is a far greater deal to overcome. Just think of the everyday nightmares, endless crying, withdrawal from society, and losing their sanity as just some of the things that haunted them. And what happened to the comfort women after the war ended? Many of them went on self-exile because out of guilt feelings and shame of being repeatedly raped in the comfort stations. Some were rejected by their own family, and so many of them changed their names and moved away only to never be found again. And also many of them just chose to stay silent without their family members knowing about what happened to them. And the silence went on for many decades until Lola Maria Rosa Hanson, the very first Filipino comfort woman to speak of her experience, surfaced in 1992. She became the beacon of light of many other comfort women to surface not only in the Philippines but in other parts of Asia as well. She was already 64 when she came out and it was also the first time her children discovered about the dark ordeal their mother went through. Together with the other comfort women, they filed a lawsuit to the Toka District Court demanding three things. That they should be compensated, that the Japanese government issue a formal apology and that the Japanese government must rewrite their textbooks acknowledging the abuses made by the Japanese Imperial Army to the comfort women. And did they already achieve their demands? They haven't been paid yet by the Japanese government. But at least the Japanese government set up a foundation and gathered donations from their private citizens. Many of the comfort women declined this offer and still demanded a formal government compensation. It's like saying, my honor is more important than money. And for the apology, no formal institutional apology has been made by their government until now. It's basically saying, no, we haven't done this comfort thing. 
and for the rewriting of the Japanese textbooks? Yeah, your guess is as good as mine. It's a big fat no. So where are the comfort women now? And where is their plight heading to? They are dying due to old age, and there are only about six or seven still alive. The Filipino comfort women are the last living threads that connect the Filipinos to that painful part of history and they do not have much time left. They will continue to fight for the things that they should rightly deserve, but until when? And after they are gone, who will carry on the fight?